What's going on, everyone? Only Sports back with another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about three trade targets that the Toronto Maple Leafs seem to be very interested in as we, uh, you know, leading up to the NHL trade deadline. Um, three key targets that the Toronto Maple Leafs have been linked to uh, over the past week. Of course, of course, Jake Muzzin placed on LTIR, unfortunately, but on the bright side, that frees up six point or five point six two five million dollars. So the Leafs have a bit of room to work with. Um, you know, leading up to the deadline, which means Muzzin will be out until the playoffs. Um, he'll, you know, he'll probably come back, um, probably for game one of the playoffs, um, to be honest. That's probably what's going to happen. I don't think he's really going to need as long as he's going to get. I think the Leafs just kind of did this to free up some cap and um, be able to use a little bit more at the trade deadline. But the Leafs already made a couple trades. They traded for Carter Hutton. That really hasn't done much. He hasn't even came to Toronto. Um, but Ilya Labushkin, he's played ever since he got here. He's been pretty decent. Um, he's a big guy. He's a big defenseman. He uses his body. Of course, without Jake Muzzin in the lineup, he's going to be key. And he's been playing uh, consistently on, on a nightly basis since I, th I think he's played three or four games since he's been traded to the Leafs. But now, um, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, they have all that money. So now they're linked to all the top free agents on the market. But... Kyle Dubas is a guy who really doesn't love to trade for guys that are going to be rentals. I mean, Nick Foligno last year, you know, with that exception, but I think he thought that Foligno would come back. I really do. Um, being a Toronto guy and, you know, Foligno really wanted to come here. It just didn't end up working out. But, you know, if you look at some of um, Kyle Dubas' past trades, they've been with for guys that have term. Look at Jake Muzzin. Look at Jack Campbell. Those guys have had term when he's traded for them. So it's definitely interesting, but... Um, you know, it, it's obviously ideal if you get a guy who's got more than just this year on his contract. And there are some guys out there. There's no question about it. Jacob Chikrin, I made a video about him, Josh Manson, and uh, John Klingberg. Uh, I made a video on them. I think Chikrin's still a possibility. It's just going to take a lot to get Chikrin um, because Arizona doesn't necessarily have to trade him. Um, you know, like some of these other teams, like Dallas, they really want to trade Klingberg because he's on an expiring contract. They would rather get something for him than let him walk. Um, so Chikrin would be ideal because he's still got two or three years left at four and a half million on that deal. But thinking a little bit more realistically, uh, I think the top three names that the Leafs are in on right now, I, I mean, you could look at so many names, but I think the top three are John Klingberg, Philip Forsberg, and JT Miller. You look at a few other names out there that the Leafs could potentially be in on, um, and there and there's there's some names out there. Um, of course, Mark Giordano, um, Ben Sherrod. You know the Leafs could go for a guy like that potentially, but those guys are both on expiring contracts. Um, so who knows what's going to happen? I think the the thing with a guy like Giordano, which is good, is that um, you can easily bring him back. Um, he's a Toronto guy. Um, he would probably wouldn't mind playing here um so maybe you would be able to resign them there, there's a ton of names but like i said before john klingberg jt miller and philip forsberg this week were the um, most highly talked about guys um in terms of you know the toronto maple leafs trading for and, and kyle dubas and and, and um and Brendan Shanahan, i think are definitely going to make a move now that they have this money freed up um the question is who will they get and what will they give up um and let's start off with John Klingberg. Um, Klingberg is a guy who's on an expiring deal, um, like I said, but he's got a cap hit of four point two five million for the season. So you wouldn't have to retain anything to bring him in, which would be nice. Um, the only issue, like I said, he is a UFA at the end of the year, so does he even come back? Um, and who knows? Klingberg is still young; he's twenty nine years of age. He's six foot three. He's a defenseman that the Leafs really need. He's a right shot defenseman. He would be ideal for the Leafs. Um, you take a look at his numbers. He's kind of taken a step back this year. He's got twenty six points in forty four games. But you look at you know his productivity from the past, his past seasons. He's been tremendous. So uh, Klingberg is definitely an interesting name. Um, and, and I would be surprised if the Leafs got him. I wouldn't be surprised if they got any of these guys. And now that they have um, this money, to be quite honest with you. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they get, you, you know, no matter who they get. If they bring in Chikrin, I would not be surprised. If they bring in Miller, I wouldn't be surprised. Klingberg, Forsberg, Manson, Giordano, Sherrod, any of these guys, I would not be surprised at all. Um, but it, of course, has to be at the right price. Um, you know, so we'll see what the Leafs end up doing. But Klingberg is the first, um, you know, guy I wanted to talk about in this video. I, want, I didn't want to get too in-depth with him because, you know, I already made a video um, about him as well as Chikrin and Manson. But John Klingberg, the Swede, right shot defenseman. Um, and, you know, he's a UFA, which sucks. And he would probably get 7 or $8 million next year. So if you end up getting Klingberg, it would more than likely be a rental. The next guy is Philip Forsberg. He's another guy who would probably be a rental. Uh, he is a left winger of the Nashville Predators. He's another Swedish player. He's 27 years of age. He's coming in with a cap hit of $6 million this season um, on an expiring contract. He's got already this season 27 goals in 40 games. So, you know, it doesn't take much. You, you know, it doesn't take a genius to tell you that he's going to get probably 8 or $9 million in the offseason. So he's another guy who would probably be a rental um, if the Toronto Maple Leafs were to bring him in. Um, Nashville, it sounds like they really want to trade him. And if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, you definitely, without question, have to go out and see what it's going to take. And I think the Leafs, you know, they're, they're going to look into every guy, um, every possible guy, and it's it's going to be interesting to see what they do. But Philip Forsberg, uh, he's been in Nashville for a while now. Um, of course, he was drafted by Washington, but uh, he's been he's been uh, with the Predators since 2012, 2013, and over the course of his NHL career, he's got 430 points in 537 games. He's got a ton of playoff experience. He's played in 71 playoff games. He's got 52 points in the playoffs. He is. Not a joke. Um, you know, he can do a lot of things, and he would be a huge help to the Leafs. Um, you know, and you know, on the left wing, you would probably play with Nylander and Tavares, and then you would slide Kerfoot down. Who knows? Maybe you would have to trade Kerfoot if you end up getting Forsberg to free up the three and a half million, not just for this year, but even moving forward, and, and potentially hope to bring Forsberg back. But he's another guy who, you know, getting a lot of money next year. If they were to bring in him or a guy like uh, Klingberg, it would be tough to keep them. Um, beyond this year, but who knows? I mean, the Leafs have done crazy things before, and maybe they end up um, figuring something out in terms of the cap, and, and they're able to bring a you know a, a guy that they bring in this year, um, who's a free agent at, in the summer, and they're able to sign him at eight million or seven million. Who knows? Um, but the Leafs uh, definitely will be in on Philip Forsberg moving closer to the trade deadline. The last guy I wanted to talk about in this video is the twenty-eight year old from the Vancouver Canucks, that is JT Miller. And the good thing with Miller is he's not a rental. Um, he signed for next season um, at $5.25 million, just the same cap pit as this year. Um, so he's an interesting name. 28 years old from the Vancouver Canucks. The Leafs are interested in him. Um, he's played over the course of his career with the Rangers, Lightning, and now the Canucks. He's been tremendous. Um you know, in his time with the Canucks, really, he's been a great player around the league for a while, so he's definitely a name I could see the Leafs go after. Um, he's another guy who's got playoff experience. He's played 78 career playoff games. He's got 44 points in the playoffs. And I think what Kyle Dubas would like the most with uh, Miller is that he is signed next season, and he's not at a huge number. $5.25 million is nothing huge. And I think um, this is definitely reasonable. Um the question is, what does Vancouver want? You would probably have to give a package like um, Alex Kerfoot, Travis Dermott, a first-round pick, and maybe Ilya Mikheyev, something like that, um, which, you know, for JT Miller is not bad. Um, you know, we have a lot of forwards that are capable of playing. Nick Robertson, we saw him play last night. He can play. There's no question about that. He can come in the lineup, um, you know, wherever you put him in the lineup, and he's going to be a good, fast player. Um, and if you bring in JT Miller, just like Philip Forsberg, he goes on the left wing um, of the John Tavares and William Nylander line, maybe even plays center a little bit um, if John Tavares, you know, moves to the wing sometimes. Who knows? But you have flexibility with JT Miller. You also have uh, a, a, a tiny bit of term. You have him signed next season, and maybe you can get a deal done so that he's signed even longer. Um, but Miller, there's no question he's a fantastic player. He would be a slam dunk for the Leafs, and there's a lot of players 
um, that I would love the Toronto Maple Leafs to get at the trade deadline. But these are three interesting names to look out for as the Leafs have been linked to them over the past week since putting Jake Muzzin on the LTIR and freeing up that $5.625 million. And expect the Leafs to be pretty aggressive in um, you know towards the trade deadline and bring in a name that makes a lot of fans um, and the team very, very excited about. Guys, that's all I got in this video. You guys let me know down below in the comments section your thoughts on these three targets for the Toronto Maple Leafs, John Klingberg, Philip Forsberg, and JT Miller. I could definitely see any of them be traded to the Leafs, um, but I th my favorite is JT Miller because he's got an extra year on, the, uh, on his contract. He would not be a rental, um, so I really like JT Miller. Let me know who you want, what do you think is going to happen. Leave your predictions down below in the comments section. These are just three players the Leafs will be in on so many um, you know there's so many guys they could go after um, at the trade deadline um, whether they're rentals or whether they're guys uh, that are on an expiring contract and they'll be able to re-sign next season or if they're guys with term um, but there's so many guys the Leafs could go after there's a ton of good names out there and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen as we get closer to the NHL trade deadline but like I said that's all I got in this video comment down below leave a like on the video and subscribe if you guys are new we'll see you guys on the next video go Leafs go